Hey guys, today we're going to be discussing a video I came across by Certified Flat Earth Idiot Jaronism, or JISM for short. Now in our first two Flat Earth videos, we destroyed Flat Tard Delano TV, and Delano, if you are watching this, you are a fucking idiot. While Delano TV was an easy target for me because he provides no proof and no evidence to back his claims, Jism, on the other hand, actually believes that he can prove mathematically and scientifically observational reality using a flat earth model. And as you will see, his favorite argument is the argument of perspective. Now the law of perspective is a mathematical equation that can accurately predict how objects will shrink uniformly as they move away from an observer. Essentially, all flat earthers prescribe perspective to describe what occurs when the sun sets below the horizon, because on a flat earth there is no curvature. The sun simply gets so far away that it vanishes from sight at the horizon, but by using basic geometry and trigonometry you will see that this argument falls apart under minimal mathematical scrutiny. Hey, we just we use GPS for everything. <laughs> yep, really funny. Let's just trust GPS everyone. I mean pay no attention to the fact that it's owned by the US government operated by the US Air Force. Yeah, let's also pay no attention to the fact that if you put in the coordinates it gets you where you want to go almost every single fucking time. And let's also pay no attention to the fact that even if fucking Hitler owned and operated GPS, it would still get you where you want to go almost every single fucking time. And let's pay no attention to the fact that you are a fucking idiot. And it's a simple test. Uh, I set two points level with each other using the water surface as the level. And so that the height of the instrument is the same height above the water as the target that I'm uh, pointing on. And the purpose of this sketch is to get across this relationship that the horizontal plane is perpendicular to the direction of the vertical plumb line. Okay, and so I took pictures with my telescope set horizontally, and you can see that the target is below that line. Of course, this is very exaggerated. Let's go and take a look at one of those pictures. It's, yeah, it looks like this. Okay. And, uh, and I've got it, you know, coming, looking at it from the other direction as well. Same thing. Now, what does that tell you? Uh, it tells you that if the earth were flat, then the vertical plumb line would be parallel everywhere. There, there would be not there. This inclination would not exist. It would be parallel. And the sum of the zenith angles would be 90 no matter what. So after doing my own research, I found out that Jesse Kozlowski is a professional geodetic surveyor for Maser Consulting out of New Jersey. Geodetic surveyors are necessary for construction projects that occur over great distances, such as railways, highways, and bridges. What Mr. Kozlowski is saying is that plumb lines on a flat earth should all be parallel to one another. Plumb lines are the vertical lines that intersect the horizontal plane of the earth at a perpendicular or 90 degree angle. Now with basic geometry, plumb lines and the zenith angle, you should be able to accurately determine whether the earth is flat or globe. So let's see if we can figure this one out ourselves. But first, let's make a few assumptions. Number one, the viewing height of both observers is exactly the same. Number two, the lines of sight of both observers intersect their relative plumb lines at perpendicular or 90 degree angles so that each observer is looking exactly straight parallel to the horizontal plane of the earth. Now if we are living on a flat earth, all plumb lines should be parallel to one another because all plumb lines should intersect the exact same horizontal plane of the earth at the exact same perpendicular angle. 
Using geometry, we can now assert that the lines of sight of both observers are parallel not just to each other, but also to the horizontal plane of the Earth, resulting in a zenith angle of exactly 180 degrees. But if we were living on a globe Earth, then every single plumb line would be leaning away from every other plumb line. And if the two observers maintained their line of sight to be perpendicular to their respective plumb lines, it would be impossible for them to be parallel to one another. The only way to get the line of sights to become parallel is to increase the zenith angle on both observers equally until the line of sights align themselves. And this is exactly what Mr. Kozlowski measured and observed with his experiment. Jism, you are mathematically and geometrically incorrect, and you are a fucking idiot. What Jesse is showing here is that when you look into the distance, items reduce in size. That's it. Of course, the sum of the zenith angles will always be greater than 180 in all directions. And this is because items do not get larger with distance, they get smaller. And hence, you have angles larger than 180 degrees and will every time in every direction. Then he says if the Earth were flat, that the vertical plumb lines would be parallel. And guess what? They are parallel. What you're doing is you're taking an observer's line of sight and looking off in the distance, in which case the sight line will always miss the target high. Not because of curvature, but because you're measuring perspective. Oh wow, am I really about to try to explain this fucktard's logic? Jism and I can both agree that as objects move further away they decrease in size uniformly due to perspective. However, for some fucked off reason, he also believes that as they decrease in size they drop in elevation. How the fuck is this even possible on a flat earth you fucking idiot? What the law of perspective actually describes is how objects shrink uniformly in size but maintain their relative position to the line of sight of the observer. Jism, what you're saying is factually incorrect and you are a fucking idiot. Here, I'll give you a couple of examples to show how fucking wrong you are. Now anyone can see in this picture that all the metal handrails seem to converge on one single point at the end of the pier. Not only that, but if you drew straight lines along the edges of the planks, they would also all appear to point to that exact same point at the end of the pier. Also, the wooden benches in the middle all seem to rise up to the same exact point. This is a perfect example of how perspective actually works. I've added this small animation to show you perspective in action. Notice how his hands remain in perfect perspective alignment with the metal railing on the outside of the pier. I did not have to increase his elevation, I simply increased his size uniformly and it appears as though he's coming down the pier towards you. Jism, what I don't think you fucking understand is that arguing that objects drop in elevation as they get further away from you in every direction is an argument for a globe earth. Thank you, but we don't need any fucking help from any fucking idiots like you. Let's take a look at the raw measurements of Mr. Kozlowski and see if we can find anything interesting. Jesse shows that he measured an 8 inch drop after 7300 feet. So if he walked to his next target, and again measured 7,300 feet, he'd again measure about 8 inches. And if he went from San Francisco to San Diego, measuring section by section of 7,300 feet, he'd cover 2.6 million feet, measuring 8 inches per. So 361 sections of 8 inches each is 2,893 inches, or 241 feet. But San Francisco to San Diego is 500 miles. There should be 31.45 miles of drop. Jesse measured 241 feet. Someone should tell Jesse that we are missing 31.40 miles of curvature. And somebody should tell Jism that he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. If you weren't already completely convinced that Jism's a fucking idiot, then what he just said should push you beyond any further contemplation. Jism, you are describing observations that can only be made on a constantly declining plane. 8 inches per mile over 500 miles would result in 241 feet. 
While your middle school mathematics are amazing, your elementary intellect infuriates me because you are not taking into account that when the second observer looks back at the first observer, the first observer is not eight inches above him, the first observer is eight inches below him. You have made this proclamation yourself earlier in this video. The actual equation you're looking for is eight inches per mile squared, which is where you're gonna find the missing 31 and a half miles. But I know that you know this and yet you still choose to be intellectually dishonest. You are a fucking idiot. So here we see the crosshairs missing the target high. And Jesse thinks this is because he lives on a ball and the target is angled away from him. But actually, the reason that we miss the target high is because things in the distance reduce in size. Nothing is leaning away from you. The so-called zenith angle is actually perspective. So we know that things will always shrink. Your sight line will always be high of the target. And just because someone told you that the reason for this is because you live on a big space ball doesn't make it true. In this case, it makes it a lie. You are a fucking idiot. My crosshair uh, through my level instrument sitting on top of the fire tower at Apple Pie Hill at about elevation 256 feet looking at the Comcast building, which is over a thousand feet tall, but we are uh, intersecting it at the top rather than somewhere down lower at 256, let's say. Maybe now you can see the problem. Jesse thinks if he looks through a leveled telescope at 256 feet high and looks across 30 miles at the Comcast building, which is over a thousand feet tall, that his crosshairs should hit that building at 256 feet as if buildings in the distance remain the same height no matter how far away they are. The truth is that when you look through a telescope, you're looking at a 2D image, a picture or a 2D window in front of you. You can't just take that one person's perspective because we all know things shrink in the distance. And we know that the telescope does not know. Oh my fucking god, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, it's time that we end this video. Jism just said that the inability for an inanimate object to comprehend what it's observing is actual proof of a flat earth. Jism, you are a fucking idiot. Now I'd like to take the time out to thank Jism and Jism's mom for providing Jism with a basement, a computer, and an internet connection to put out flat earth videos for me to debunk. I actually look forward to debunking more of Jism's dumbass videos cause Jism is a fucking idiot. Be sure to like and subscribe to keep current with our content. I'm Father Skeptic and I'm out. <laughs>